Here's our good buddy Howie Rose on the mend, and he says hello on a busy afternoon. Howie, always a pleasure here. This is uh, great news if you're a Met fan. Marte, uh, Escobar, and company, and now you throw Scherzer into the mix. They should be good to go in 2022. Let me get your thoughts on it. Go ahead. Boy, the, narr the narrative is sure changed in about a week, right? Remember when Stephen Matz wound up going to St. Louis? All you heard was nobody wants to play for the Mets. They won't take Steve Cohen's money. There's all these ancillary issues preventing guys from coming to New York. But, you know, here we go. And the other thing is, remember, Chris, how over the last few years we've talked about the guys over 30 being frozen out? Well, the Mets signed, you know, two nice players in Escobar and Canna the other day. And obviously a very, very good one in Marte, all over 30. And now Scherzer, assuming that this deal gets done, he's 37. And look at the money he's getting. So I don't think the guys over 30 are going to be on breadlines anytime too soon. Now, <laughs> that's an excellent point. Uh, how much do you think this is a reaction to the fact that the Mets got, uh, you know, essentially rejected by every uh, known GM candidate in America? And, of course, last year finishing in embarrassing fashion and the fact that, uh, you know, the honeymoon seemed to be over for Steve Cohen. So, as a result, he knew that he could make do here and uh, increase the honeymoon period with Mets fans by spending a fortune. That's just what he, that is what he's done. How much do you think is a reaction to all what's happened before? four in the last three, four months? I think that's the logical assumption, but I think that was part of Steve's plan from the very beginning. He didn't buy this team to pinch pennies. He didn't buy this team to, to continue being perceived as the, uh, you know, little stepchild of the Yankees in New York. Uh, he might have a little George Steinbrenner in him in a lot of ways. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing, because I can remember when the Yankees were at their peak under Steinbrenner and the Mets were struggling, Met fans were saying, boy, I wish George Steinbrenner owned the Mets. Well, you know what? Now they might have one who is willing to spend to almost unlimited extremes, as we're seeing here. And if that's what you want for putting the best team together you can, regardless of the dollars and cents, well, here you go. Can't complain about that, right? You see any negative at all of giving Scherzer 37 uh, years old, three year contract at roughly 40, 45. You see any negative to that at all uh, as a guy who's done the Mets here since 1962? Or is this a no win? This is a no lose situation bringing, uh, you know, a Hall of Famer here east back to New York. Well, sure, Chris, there's always a risk at that age when you're giving a, a pitcher in particular that kind of a salary. And, uh, you know, it gets to a point where, I mean, what's the difference between an average annual value of $43 million, $40 million, $35 million? Obviously, and it's an expenditure that Steve Cohen is willing to make. But, yeah, there's great risk with pitchers, even on a short-term deal at those dollars. You know, the idea of Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer, one-two in the same rotation, is tantalizing. But when you consider the Grom's issues with his health last year and Scherzer's advancing age, you have to have at least a slight degree of trepidation going in. But I think it's a move you make almost 100 out of 100 times if, if you're Steve Cohen. All right, Marte now in center. You can put D uh, Nemo out there in one of the corner spots, and you have speed at the top of the lineup. That's a no-brainer. I know he's 31, 32 years of age. Keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, he was uh, wanted by lots of teams. That gives the Mets some speed and some uh, decent, good defense in center field at the top of the lineup there, Howie. Thoughts on that? Yeah, you certainly, I would think, would, would kick Nimmo to left field. I don't know that he's got a right fielder's arm, quite frankly. But, you know, the idea of Nimmo in left and Marte in center and however they hit them in the order, you know, Nimmo's a great on-base guy. Um, I, I don't know that you hit nine and one necessarily, assuming there's a designated hitter. Um, but you got a lot of things you can do in terms of maximizing their speed and ability to get on and obviously whole different dimension with Marte and those stolen bases, as you just saw. Um, right field is interesting. I'm not sure that Cannon necessarily is plugged in there every day. The Mets may have another move in them for at least a platoon outfielder. There's a lot of, lot of moving parts here, though. We still don't know where Baez winds up. We still don't know. We're assuming that Conforto is going to leave. Um, you know, we still don't know where Marcus Stroman winds up as far as more pitching depth is concerned. The Mets are not done yet. Assuming the Scherzer thing gets done, they don't close the books and we'll see you in spring training whenever that starts. There are still moves to be made here, particularly with the uncertainty over Robinson Cano coming back. Yeah, he's contracted for two more years at a lot of money, but he just was shut down with back problems in his winter league. So uh, there, there's still a lot to be done here. 
All right, how about Baez, Howie? This would make me think here with the with Escobar especially. This would make me think that the Mets are going to pass on Baez and go in another direction. I can't see them paying him 150 to 200 million dollars after all the money they have just spent in the last few days. What's your take on that? I would agree with you theoretically. You could certainly do a lot worse than just plugging Jeff McNeil back in at second base, but there's a caveat there. He and Francisco Lindor, as we know, did not click at all last year. And if you say, well, okay, McNeil is trade bait, Dom Smith is trade bait, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But you're selling low. They both had below average years for them. So, you know, a, a trade for either or both of them or one that would involve either or both of them doesn't necessarily bring you what you might like to think you can get back. But right now, I would think based on the finances, the wild card is how much further Steve Cohen wants to go. Obviously, he's blowing past the luxury tax. Maybe they do re-sign Baez. I know that Lindor is pushing for that, but Baez might be one of those guys who's just going to take whatever the last nickel is on the table, whether that's from the Mets, the Tigers, or somebody else. Last thing, Howie, the Braves, of course, uh, cemented what they're about with that championship. They've been very good for a long time. they got a winning culture. You know better than anybody, you saw it in 92 with what the Mets did, and it turned out to be a complete mess. Uh, you can bring in all the players you want, uh, but, you know, getting them, to be, getting them to be cohesive, blending well in this market, it's not always a guarantee. So I know Scherzer is a great pitcher. I know Escobar is a dangerous offensive player. And I know whoever they, if they keep, obviously, um, Baez, who knows on Stroman. You can bring all the, uh, Marte, you can bring all the guys you want, but to get them to mold properly to have a big-time team in a division where the Braves have that chemistry is not that easy. Your take there. It's a, it's a very important point you make, Chris. And keep in mind, as of now, the Mets don't have a manager either. And I think when you look at some of the things that happened last year, the fight, whatever it was, to the extent that it was between Lindor and McNeil, the reprehensible thumbs down to the fans, which was engineered by Lindor and Baez and Kevin Pillar, there was a shortage of leadership in the Mets clubhouse last year and maybe the dugout, too, because Luis Rojas never really got on top of that. And I would submit that if David Wright were in the clubhouse, if Terry Collins were in the manager's seat, that stuff doesn't happen last year. And it certainly wouldn't have been abided. And so I think that's kind of a wild card here, too. We don't know who's going to manage the Mets personally. Uh, I think one of your cohorts in MLB Network, Buck Showalter, would be a great fit. I'm not sure how Mark Epp or how Billy Epler feels about that or Steve Cohen. But, boy, I would campaign for Buck. That's just me. Buck in 22. I blame me. I'll, I'll hold up I'll the signs. You, there's somebody else. That there's somebody else on the West Coast who would uh, pick up a phone if you called him, too. And he's going to the Hall of Fame. His name is Bruce Bochy. Would he want to manage on the East Coast? I, I would hope, yeah. I, I would hope he'd be a candidate. I would hope Mike Sosha would be a candidate. Yeah, good one. Good job. Howie, well done. Always a pleasure to see you, pal. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you coming on here today. Thanks, Chris. Happy birthday, Vince Scully.